Hello there and welcome to another Eurogamer newscast and this week we're talking about the return of Silent Hill which is back after two decades of being lost in the mist, in the in the mist of time. Joining me to talk about all of that is Eurogamer's news reporting team. We've got Ed Nightingale. Hello. And Victoria Kennedy. Hello. And I'm Tom Phillips and we're recording this the morning after the night before where Silent Hill returned and we got a look as expected at a number of Silent Hill games projects in development a movie some merchandise tat Konami wanted you to know that Silent Hill was back um let's very briefly go through if you haven't watched it already if you haven't read about it on Eurogamer uh what was shown and then we'll get into sort of our thoughts on the overall package um but let's kick off with silent hill 2 the remake which was i think the big uh reveal of the evening but perhaps the most anticipated there'd been a number of leaks right ed i mean tons of leaks um and bloober team have been associated with this leaked room remake for a very long time so it's the one thing that we all i don't want to say expected we sort of knew was coming um, we expected so it. yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice that it was there right at the beginning. I think you're right. It was the I guess it's it's the thing that is the closest to coming out, um, even though it's still a way away. So we didn't really get too much real gameplay, but we got the the biggest look at that. What did you think, Ed? I mean, as you said, it's it's relatively far along. Um, it looks like it could potentially release in the next year, although we certainly didn't get any expectations of a a launch date um we did however get some launch platform details yes so it's ps5 console exclusive for a year which means i'm sure it'll pop up on game pass in a year's time um but it's also on pc as well um so yeah they're very much pushing um ps5 and i guess the association of silent hill with playstation um you know particularly ps1 and ps2 from back in the day um i mean i will i will preface this whole chat with i have never played a silent hill game and it's a series that i have wanted to dive into for a long time so for me like i saw this remake and was like great now i really want to go back and play um the, the original silent hill 2 um i also haven't played a bloober game and i know that people have very mixed feelings about their games um people seem to be or or at least from news of the the leaks coming out, people have been worried about Bloober Team taking on this game and what that might mean and how they might change it. Um, and so for that, that's another reason I'm desperate to now go back and play Silent Hill 2, the original version of it. Um, and if anything, this this entire presentation made me excited about Silent Hill as someone who hasn't played the games before. And I immediately started looking up, where can I play this? Um, and ironically, the easiest place to play Silent Hill 2 is on an Xbox um, <laughs> because they released Silent Hill HD Collection on the PS3 and Xbox 360, which is a HD version of the two PS2 games. Um, but that is available on the Xbox Store to play on an Xbox Series X. So if you want to play that on modern consoles, that's actually the easiest way of doing it, which is what I now plan to do to catch up. And then I will have a comparison point um, when this remake comes out and I can see how authentic it really is. My immediate thought is that it looks really interesting, but it looks like Silent Hill, but from the, the minimal amount of Silent Hill that I've seen. So I don't have too much thoughts on authenticity of it, but um, but I'm very excited to, to play it from what I've seen. That's a really good point about being able to play Silent Hill 2 now. And uh, it, it, it's actually something that also came up this week with uh red dead redemption which lost um or disappeared from the playstation streaming catalog part of ps plus premium now uh was previously playstation now and uh there were quite a few comments actually on our story about that uh which you know was ostensibly just a story about a game disappearing from the catalog but it had been there six years and and it you realize in times like this and, and silent hill is another example of it that um, it is getting difficult to play these old games. Um, 
and I I don't want to get more comments saying, oh, you know, you're just pointing this out because you love Xbox, but uh, the backwards compatibility stuff on Xbox, being able to play Silent Hill 2 now, all of these years on is is a fantastic thing to shout out. I um, was secretly hoping that they might say, and here are all the old games on PS Plus. Um, yeah. But they didn't. And I was I was really hoping they'd do that as, a, as an easy way to get back and play well. That's not going to yeah. get people pre-ordering the new one. <laughs> True. I was hoping there might have been a little something for PS Plus as well after that. Yeah, with the PlayStation connection, the fact mm. that uh, you had random PlayStation exec man popping up at one point just to say to give him really the full happy. title. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, Herman Hulse was busy. Jim Ryan couldn't make it. He was too busy in Brussels. Of course. Victoria, uh, next up last night, we got Silent Hill Townfall, which uh, is, I think for me, maybe more interesting than Silent Hill 2. It's certainly less expected. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of people being quite excited about that one online, uh, just from reaction posts and things that have been popping up over the last 12 or so hours. Um, and I, quite, I yeah, I'm quite curious about that one again. Uh, I gather from what I read further um, after last night's showcase, it's going to be a sort of episodic style of story so that is something that i've always enjoyed in the past so yeah i mean i should again like i'm gonna uh, come in i've probably got more silent hill experience than ed in the sense that i have dabbled with them but i am by no means like uh, a lover or a hater i'm kind of fairly neutral i have a general like overview of what That's it fair. is but i'm not just just so we're clear for anyone listening or or not um but yeah i, I, it's I like it's difficult to play one. silent hill sorry i was yes. gonna say been difficult to play because it's not been around. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the PT. I'll say that. Ooh, that counts, PT. right? That's a Silent Hill game. I think it does count. <laughs> it's listed on the Wikipedia page of like the Silent Hill release chronology. Then it's, it's absolutely on Wikipedia. Legit. It's absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to turn into a Silent Hill thing, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll get onto this later. But I, like, this it is a really interesting franchise and where it's at right now. And uh, mm. um, Townfall is being developed, we should say, by uh, no, no Code. Code, which is the Glasgow-based studio which developed the anthology series Stories Untold, being published by Annapurna Interactive, which is generally a good stamp of quality. Um, they're a very, very well-regarded indie publisher. And this looks this is good. Um, but as we'll yeah, get into like later, that it's Konami not being developed sort of... by Konami. Well, I, I like that they are kind of branching out that uh, sort of their team, I suppose, for this. Um, and I also, I, um, I I don't have anything solid to base this on yet, but I have heard that Townfall is going to be like the start of an anthology series. I, again, I have nothing to say this is, you know, legit or not, but that is kind of like current rumblings on the internet is that this is the beginning of an anthology from No Code in the Silent Hill franchise. That I'll say as sense. well um observation which is their previous game is brilliant and well worth playing um it definitely has that psychological horror kind of vibe but it's all set in a space station um it's very puzzly um which i don't know how that compares to silent hill um but it definitely has a very odd creepy atmosphere to it but set up in space um so i would absolutely recommend people go and check out observation um to see what they did previously do you like a puzzle? Nice. Next up, we had the return. What was it called? Return to Silent Hill was the name <laughs> of the film. <laughs> return to Monkey Island. No, Return to <laughs> Silent Hill, which is this long discussed film project that the original Silent Hill movie director, if you can remember back to 2006, um, the director of that film, which starred Sean Bean, is back. He's been wanting to do this next film for some time. And we got a look at some storyboards, some concept art. It seems based on Silent Hill 2. So it's interesting that that's coming out. And also the uh, remake. They're still, they said, casting it. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be out anytime particularly soon no, i'd say it's still um, a few years away yeah i think the announcement was more to kind of bundle it all into a one big showcase rather than because they actually felt ready to announce it 
if that makes sense. But, yeah, it was interesting because the, the way they described it was almost like the driving force of this new wave of Silent Hill games. Basically, the, was... the very chatty film director had talked about it previously and now sort of they had to mention it. One thing that did abuse me last night is the fact that uh, the presenters, after they had done their little sort of bit about the film, they're like, we hope that our games live up to the standard of the films. And I was like, um, I think the comparison should go the other way. Like, <laughs> surely the games were the sort of... I don't know, I, I thought that was quite an odd thing to say during that showcase. It's been a very long time since I watched that film. I only ever saw it once. It was during a time in my life when I had a student job and I worked at a cinema. And I basically saw that film because we could just go watch films as part of our job. Uh, well, we weren't paid to watch films. It was, you know, during our, our time, perk. during our perk. evenings. And it was okay. It was okay. Sean Which Liz. compared to a lot of, well, spoilers, but, but. yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that is a spoiler. You know, you see a, a film with Sean Bean in. Oh, boy. Well, I guess you borrow me the pink die. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's all right, which on a scale of video game movies probably places it quite high up. But, um, you know, I don't I don't think I don't think like crowds of cinema goers were waiting for the next Sun and Hill movie like they were the next Star Wars chapter. It's I, I, they're basically just going to have to go do a sort of reboot with it because no one remembers the 2006 film to think oh I need the story to continue from there they did spend a lot of time on this film without really saying very much because it's very early in development they don't have a cast yeah. they don't really have it they've got a storyboard um th that's kind of about it and they seem to spend a lot of time really really hyping it up but I also feel like that goes for the entire showcase it was 40 <laughs> minutes that could have been at least oh. 20 like there was a lot of fluff in there Shout out so to yeah, Konami, we... though, because they messed up the live streaming, which meant that from the moment that the video went live, you could just watch it on double speed and click through to the bits that actually you were interested in watching. So thank you, Konami, for that. It was also 10 minutes <laughs> before the time that it actually went live. It was meant to be yes. 11 and it went up at 10.50. Yeah. yeah, because they had that 10 minute countdown window at which the beginning. Which you could then just skip. Which you could then skip through. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, you know what it reminded me of? Have you ever seen the movie Fargo? Sorry, not Fargo. That's a different film. Argo. The yes, ben Affleck although I can't remember it too much. One? Yeah, Ben Affleck plays the CIA guy who is... What he does is he extracts people from places and it's about the Iranian hostage crisis. And it's a true story. They made up this fictional film that didn't exist. And he flew in, posed as a director and picked up the people that were in hiding that he needed to extract and took them out of the country through the Iranian passport control saying, these are the people that I've been in the country shooting this movie with that didn't exist. And, and the CIA made this whole production up. They rented Hollywood space and all of this. All of this. They made storyboards and uh, it was all, all nonsense. And I just, I, I, as they were sort of holding up the storyboards last night, being like, look, this, this film exists. It just reminded me of that. And people were going, look, this film exists. And it's just, you know, some sketches on a bit of cardboard. <laughs> and that's all we have so far. But it, some apparently government it'll be officials at play is what you're trying to say. <laughs> it's, I, I definitely agree that there was some padding going on last night. But uh, we can talk, we can talk more about that as we get onto our opinions of the overall show because there were yet more games um there was a thing called silent hill ascension which is from genvid and uh for some reason jj abrams's bad robot games was involved and there was a statement from jj abrams uh which was basically held up on a bit of cardboard as well and the poor lady had to read it out in a very monotone voice As yeah. it sounded quite robotic it was very awkwardly delivered <laughs> like a bad robot Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was what they were going for. But it, I mean, it certainly wasn't written by J.J. Abrams' PA. Certainly not. Um, this, uh, we didn't get any real detail on this game. Uh, but it's an, in I recently um, got a look at Genvid's Walking Dead game. 
and they've done quite a few of these licensed things now which all seem to operate in basically the same way um the walking dead game operates on facebook and it's this sort of clicker game thing where you log in every so often and you do some polls and uh you do do the things that they were talking about last night which were also the things that they were sort of promising as part of this walking dead game where you your choices influence the story and it does become canon you know I, that 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 was interesting to hear them say last night because that is an exact line that they used during the walking dead thing so they were like oh you know this is a really important game because from now on the walking dead franchise this bit which i think is set in alaska during the during the early days of the zombie outbreak the walker outbreak this is canon what happens here and you decide and they also have um uh like the budget behind it is crazy they had like felicia day and someone else doing like a, a live um almost like a podcast every week being like this is this is the update that we've got you know like they've decided the facebook players have decided to go with uh this person in this life or death choice um and it feels like the Silent Hill thing is going to be a bit like that. And they never said the word Facebook last night, but they also didn't say anything else about where it will appear. So I'm going to guess that it's going to be on Facebook. But there was a lot. There was a lot there of words which essentially didn't really tell us very much about the game. <laughs> but that's what I think it'll be. Um, I mean, you sound like that's. The expert. <laughs> yeah, you, you've explained it more than I even could comprehend a few moments ago. So, well, they did—they didn't really explain it last night, but I think that's sort of, you know, you hear J.J. Abrams, bad robot, and you're like, oh, okay, what are they doing with this? It sounds—it <laughs> sounds good, and I—I I was actually quite interested in the premise, but um, yeah, I still need proof of the execution. I think on the Walking Dead game. Moving on, Silent Hill F. Victoria, you wrote about this last night. What is Silent Hill F? Well, it looks like a complete, like, veer off. So when I think of Silent Hill, I think of, like, mist and pyramid head and kind of, like, dark and not gloomy as in, like, dreary, but, like, it does have that sort of, like, heaviness to its overall look. Whereas F has obviously gone to Japan. Uh, it's set in the 1960s. And it's, I mean, I'm not going to say it looks cheerful by any means because it doesn't. It looks terrifying. But there is, it's clear and there's colour and things. And they, they really do seem to have taken a different direction for Silent Hill, obviously while still keeping it in the Silent Hill franchise. Um, and I think that this is the one for me that I'm most interested to hear more about in the future. I realise that that's not going to be for some time at the moment. Um, just because of the fact that it does look like it's going in a really different direction. And um, the names attached to it, so the writer who has done uh, some uh, graphic novels, I think it was, you know, it, it sounds like they have some interesting talent. I know there has been some debate on the developer, but at the same time, you, you know, so the developer, you know, also worked with Capcom on like the Resident Evil 3 remake, which I did enjoy. So... This is, yeah, I, this is the one that has got me most interested. It's also the trailer that really gave me goosebumps, I think, because it was unexpected. It wasn't, you know, Pyramid Head for Silent Hill 2. I was aware that he was there. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't have that same reaction to I, what I had. I can't remember the name of the phobia. We spoke about it this morning in our meeting. Tra Trachophobia. Trachophobia. Like seeing that bit. Yeah, that made my skin crawl and like the flowers blooming around them and... Yeah. It, it, it was definitely the trailer that I felt drew me most in. I didn't have trachophobia, but now I do, thanks to that trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was quite, quite the uh, imagery. World. Exactly. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious about this one. I thought it was a great trailer. Keen to see some gameplay. Yeah, I realise the trailer doesn't really tell us anything. Yeah. Um, I've seen people were debating if the F is for flowers or you know what. The F is actually going to be linked to. I've seen people say it looks like Classic FM and saying it looks like Gordon Ramsay's the F word, but it does look like Classic FM. That's the first <laughs> thing I thought of. Um, is the F like that? It's a very similar font to Forte, which means loud um, mm. or strong. Um, when uh, when you see that in music, but technically that is in italics, and in this it's not in italics. So it's a similar font, but it's not quite the same. But that is what came to my mind as soon as I saw it. I was like, that looks like 
a musical yeah. F, um, but it's not quite. I'm going to be really basic fan. here, and I just thought it's an F for five because they've done numbered games up to Silent Hill four, and this is a brand new entry. That did not even cross my mind. As but then I haven't played the rest of the series, so <laughs> that's my excuse. I I mean. <laughs> Video game makers, I think I've said this before, maybe even last week, but video game makers have a real phobia of putting numbers on games beyond three because like, that's sort of the tipping point where people are like, oh no, I have to play all 12 other... Final Fantasy is the one ex- uh, sort of exception to this rule. It's like, oh, I know, I have to play like all of the other games before I get to this in the series. Um, and, I, and I wondered if that was that. And also because Silent Hill has, has had so many other sort of spin-offs certain points but this is being thought of as a new mainline silent hill and uh while townfall was a spin-off and the two remake is a remake we don't expect that to be very different at least story-wise to the original this seems to be the new main progression of the series so i don't know you're right about the sequels. I mean, I was asking friends yesterday who have who have played the series, can I play Silent Hill 2 with it being a remake? It's like, well, why not do one? Why not start at the beginning? Um, and from what I've heard is that Silent Hill 2 sort of stands up on its own, but Silent Hill 3 is a sequel to one, which is very weird. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. If, if they'd called it Silent Hill 5, I'd be thinking, right, I need to play all four. Whereas mm. to Victoria's point, this seems very different. Um, and I'd like to think that, you know, unlike Resident Evil, where they do kind of follow each other as much as you can play them individually, it would be nice if it was kind of each one was much more individual and just had sort of subtle links to to the previous games, maybe. Uh, that was it. That was the end of the show. It ended on Silent oh, Hill. You missed out all the merchandise in F- the middle. So what about that merchandise? Did miss out the merchandise? God, you know <laughs> all that I tat, as you called it. <laughs> I literally missed it out because I skipped through it. Um, but there was there was one thing that was a bit of a spoiler. You mentioned so you won't be getting a, a little me. Oh, you cut out for me then, Victoria. You say I, oh, I every, everyone just cut out for me there. Um... <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> uh, it's so Silent Hill. It's getting in the internet pipes. Spoilers in the statues. Well, there's there was one statue can you guys hear me that now? yes, yes. We can. Um, there's okay. one statue that is um, of a dog, which apparently is a secret ending to Silent Hill Two, and I'm like, well, I mean, clearly now I want to know what the secret ending is because there's a dog, so of course I'm interested. Um, but why make a whole statue of that when there are people potentially watching Hi who have never played a Silent Hill before? Like, don't put a spoiler in. I've seen another spoiler in a statue, which maybe I won't say now. It's not the dog. <laughs> it's no not the way. dog one that I've clocked. Well, the other surprise is that everyone calls the character Pyramid Head, but apparently the actual name is Red Pyramid Thing. Had no idea. Was very surprised I... by that. He's always been Pyramid. He, she, he's always been Pyramid Head to me. This is the thing. It's like whenever this is a slight veer off our conversation, but I'm still saying Breath of the Wild too because it's just become so ingrained that that is what it's called, even though I know it's now called Tears of the Kingdom. It's always just going to be Pyramid Head to me. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. what's in my, my psyche now. Sorry, all involved. What did we think of the show overall? Ed? Do you want us to do... After you, Ed? <laughs> I was going to say, you... do you want us to recommend uh, Essential It like a Eurogamer style? Uh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Right, Ed, I, I am feeling, I think, more positive than both of you or the rest of the team in general. I would probably give it a recommended, to be honest. I am, for me, it was a success. And I think what they were trying to do was reestablish Silent Hill as a franchise. And it's been a long time since anything's come out. And this was, let's group together all the different projects we've got and reestablish that Silent Hill is a thing. And for me, they really succeeded on that. And they got me interested in a series that I've never played, never seen, um, I've seen bits of, never watched or played. And now I really want to go and watch the old film. I want to play the old games. I want to catch up on something that I've missed. Um, And it's got me excited for that. 
And I think that the games have potential. I think it's interesting that they have really pushed the original creators and yet each of these projects are being developed by different teams. So I'll be interested to see how they can make that consistent, um, both in terms of the, the, the sort of relationship to Silent Hill, but also in the quality of those games. Um, so I'm definitely intrigued by the future projects, but it has made me overall excited about the series and about the franchise. Um, so for me, I, I would recommend the, uh, the showcase. Uh, what about you, Victoria? I, I would also say recommend if we're going on the Eurogamer scale um, for I suppose similar reasons to Ed. I, I do think that, um, you know, like, like I've already mentioned, I think F looks really, really interesting in the sense of what they're doing for the series, like creating this whole new direction potentially um, for the future. I also think that whilst I know there have been some comments on the internet about how James doesn't look great in his uh, remake model um you know I, I i really love the fact that we're now seeing like the tiredness on his face so much more clearly and i think it'll be really interesting to go back and you know see those places which again like i've only dabbled in i've definitely not i couldn't explain the back lore of silent hill but i would look like i would like to go back now and play the game with the remake to see these places as they are you know reimagined now um I take it just uh, to quickly kind of jump on, on a rumor. This is slightly backtracking our conversation a bit. It's definitely one release. It's not going to be a part one, part two. Because I know there were people yeah. yesterday were debating it was going to be split in two. Yeah, that came up because someone claimed to have had a copyright strike by Konami on a video that they put on YouTube under the name Silent Hill 2 Part 1. Um, whether that person was just making it up or i don't know there was some weirdness going on there um there was certainly no mention of a part one last night and i think that there would have been when especially when you're talking about you know playstations involved um i think you need to be clear about what the game is that you're doing and and, and you know the page is already up on steam even so so yeah, this makes think... me more actually more excited about it then because i do worry when people do split things into two is if they then start adding things that needn't have been there to make a good story to like flesh it out more. Or three, as Final or Fantasy three. VII is doing. I wasn't going to name names. <laughs> We're <laughs> but, all thinking yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad that it is just going to be, um, in that case, a one-hit remake that I think looks like they are going to you know, do it justice. I appreciate we've not seen a huge amount yet, but from what we have seen, I do think it looks like they're doing a solid job of the remake we saw more of that than any of the others i i i thought i thought that looked all right i'm quietly confident that no code will do a good job with townfall uh i don't care about the movie and i have i will need to be convinced on the uh f game because the Developer previously made Resident Evil Reverse, which um, was not great at all. And uh, I think even Capcom quietly wishes that it, it never really uh, attempted. So, yeah. It also did I, three, though. That was a good remake. Yeah. The jury is out. I would, I would, not, I would not give it a badge, but I would... <laughs> I think you know. Go back to what you were saying. Ed, it does. It does. It did do the job of reintroducing the fr the franchise, and they certainly announced a lot of projects. But there's still a lot of um, questions over when are these projects coming out, what they actually going to look like beyond the Silent Hill Two remake, and um, I. <laughs> I think it, for me, it all comes back to Konami doesn't have development teams of its own anymore. And some of the people that previously worked on the Silent Hill series were there last night. We saw them and they made a big deal out of them. You know, they were standing in the mist in front of a green screen and uh, they presented these games. But they seem to be more there as presenters. And these th these games are not their games. Konami seems to be licensing it out to uh, Bloober Team, No Code, the Resident Evil Reverse developer whose name escapes me at the moment. And uh, 
yeah, I, I, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like we've seen other franchises do these sort of showcases. Capcom does them with Resident Evil, but then all of those games are Capcom games. So, um, they, you, you know, there is more of a sort of expected level of, oh, I know what this game is going to be like, and I know how good it's, it's going to be. F, I have no, I, have, I have no idea. Um, so yeah, for me, questions, questions remain. What do you guys think? So obviously Resident Evil, just so we could <clears throat> briefly mention Capcom there, has had a fairly like consistent offering. And I know like back in the day of like <clears throat> I've lost my voice again for some reason. Let me just have a quick drink of tea. <laughs> too too much talking. That's no, fine. Um Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, like Resident it's... Evil and Silent Hill were kind of like genre rivals for a while. And then the kind of Resident Evil slightly overtook and it became the sort of survival horror franchise that people tend to associate. So Resident Evil is what you'd associate with sort of survival horror. Like, do you think this is sort of Konami's way of, like, like do you think they're going to be hoping now to be getting these deals like TV show spinoffs and things like in the future? Do you feel this is like their jumping board for? I think Konami is looking at Silent Hill as a franchise with potential. There is a, uh fan base out there for it absolutely no doubt about that and they want to try and grow it again after years of letting it sit in the wilderness so yeah i I imagine that they will want to do whatever they can with it and that will include i mean yeah this is the the period where sony has basically got every single one of its first person first um party uh franchises being turned into a film or a tv show cyberpunk has come back through huge popularity with its anime netflix is doing a whole spread of tv shows and things like you've got to be thinking that konami is interested in that that's why they're um trying to do that film as well building it all into this cohesive universe of silent hill stuff uh trying to build the franchise back up again because yeah I don't know. It's an interesting comparison with Resident Evil because I think that, like you say, they were both PS1 games originally and were definitely in competition. And I think that that's now going to happen again. Um, I think there's a lot of nostalgia for Silent Hill from people that played the originals. And I think with things like the remake, they're definitely playing on that. Um, But as you said, there's now been a big gap where Resident Evil has carried on, but there's now been a big gap. so there were a lot of people that haven't played Silent Hill who are now going to have to be reintroduced to the series somehow. So it'll be interesting to see how they manage that new player and old player nostalgia thing. There was also a lot of nostalgia for Resident Evil players with the recent remakes that have done so well that I can imagine that that's what they're aspiring to um, with, uh, um, with, with the remake. And then also tonight, there is then the Resident Evil showcase. So literally within a day of each oh, other... Yeah. <laughs> There are two showcases about both with remakes. We've got Resident Evil 4, we've got Silent Hill 2. So I think they are bringing it back, but there's definitely going to be a lot of reinvigorated competition um, between the two series. And that is always good. Yeah. I do like healthy competition. Yeah. 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 Uh, Microsoft's argument in its uh, continued arguments with uh oh. market authorities for um its purchase of exhibition business yeah let us know what you thought about the silent hill presentation last night did you enjoy transmission did it answer your questions did it leave you wanting more uh leave us a comment or tweet us at Eurogamer hashtag newscast and maybe we'll read some of them out next time um until then Ed, where can people find you on Twitter? You can find me at Ed underscore Knights. Victoria? I am the little chop shop gal. And I'm at Tom Phillips. Thanks everyone for watching. If you made it this far, it's much appreciated. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.